Keine Stadt mehr. Also. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate this Sunday Mass, we celebrate the feast today of the Most Holy Trinity, the essential mystery of our faith, which tells us that God reveals himself to us as a community of Father, Son, and Spirit. Inspired by the unity 
uh, in the Trinity we come together, we come into the presence of our good and loving God, asking for his gifts of pardon and of peace. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and your spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. It's easy to say that we live in troubled times today. All we really need to do is to look back on this past week and see how that has played out. Whether it's what we've seen on the news or what people have bickered about on social media, certainly we can say we live in troubled times. But we can also make that claim about all times. Because whether it is on a national level, whether it's on a global level, or whether it's in our personal lives, we experience great trouble. Sometimes worse, sometimes less. But nonetheless, it is something that we simply can't escape from. And we're often wondering, well, what are we to do? Pope Benedict XVI shed some light on this when he said the following, we shall not solve the problems that trouble us today by theorizing, But by entering into the form of the Trinity, the Trinity provides us with the means by which the individual and the community of the church can disentangle the confusion of our times. Today we celebrate, as Father mentioned at the start of Mass, the Feast of the Holy Trinity, where God reveals himself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as he said, this is a a great mystery And don't worry, there won't be an online quiz afterwards, but it is tempting. But God has revealed to himself, above all, as a relationship, as a relationship of love. And he's revealed that in that love, he is also merciful. In the second reading from St. Paul, 
he's writing to the Corinthians who were anything but people who did the right thing. They knew trouble, most of it caused by themselves. And he closes the letter by saying, mend your ways, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. We're reminded in these words that the love of God is freely given, but we must embrace it through how we live our lives. What sort of message do we send when we say we love someone or we say we love God, but we fail to show it in our choices? In the gospel today, we really see and hear that God walks the talk, that he doesn't just say it, he does it. As we hear in the gospel, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that we might have salvation through him. God doesn't just say he loves us. He shows us his love by sending Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is known as Emmanuel, God with us, shows us the witness of love, the true witness of love, to lay down one's life for another, or truly, when thinking about this gospel, to lay down one's life, or his life, for the salvation of the world. The message of God's love is present each time we make the sign of the cross. We bless ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The sign of the cross is and should be a reminder to us of who God is and what God has done for us. Reflecting on the mystery of the Trinity, this, this mystery that seems so elusive, really brings us face to face with who we are and what that means simply by looking at who God is and how he has revealed himself to us. The Trinity is the principal truth of how God has revealed himself. It's the way he wanted us to know him, and it evolved over time. In the Old Testament, we learn that God is one. God is one. In the book of Deuteronomy, we hear, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And in his words to Moses as he passes before him in the first reading, we hear the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God. To be a Christian means to believe in Christ. And Christ is God. Jesus said, I and the Father are one, and we will send the Holy Spirit. To be a Christian means to understand that God is Father, God is Son, and God is Holy Spirit three distinct persons in one divine nature. They do not share divine nature. They each possess it in, ent in its entirety. And this is where things can, you know, get mind-boggling for people, and you're probably grateful there's not a quiz. But it is not something the church simply came up with. It's how God has revealed himself. St. Paul's letter ends with one of the earliest proclamations of the Trinitarian love that God has for us. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is what we hear. And we, if we need a reminder of that, we also hear it in Jesus' final words to the disciples in the Gospel of Matthew, when he says, go out and baptize all nations in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons. In order to know who we are, we need to know who God is because we are made in his image. This is why we have the Trinity as a special feast. This is why we try to seek to understand it a little bit more. Not so that we can become theologians, not so we can sound real smart, but so that we can recognize that we are made in his image. And therefore, we are made for love. The fact that God is a Trinity of love is the reason that love is the meaning of life. It's the reason that love and God is the true source of happiness. God reveals not only his love for us, but he also reveals, as we heard in the opening prayer, that absolute truth exists. And we are called to stand before the truth of who God is and to image God in every aspect of our life. Well, how do we do that? We image God when we are faithful to what he has commanded because God himself is faithful to us. We image God when we strive to live a life of humility for God himself humbled himself when Jesus came among us for our salvation. Imagine what our world would be like, what our communities would be like, 
what our families would be like if we all practiced humility and sought to live that humble life of Jesus. We image God when we forgive those who sin against us. For God forgives all our sins when we bring those to him. And we image God when we respect the dignity of all human life. For God is the source of life. He respects the life and dignity that he gave us. That's why in the gospel we hear that God doesn't condemn us, but when we turn from him, we do that to ourselves. That is why anything that damages our life or our human dignity and that of another is contrary to God's will, but it is us exerting our will, saying, my will be done, not thy will be done. The more we know God, the more we seek to understand him, his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the more we will come to grasp this love that he has for us. And then the more likely we are to return that love through the choices we make that reveal the love we have for God and the love we're called to have for one another. As our relationship with the Trinity grows slowly over time, we are more likely to choose what is good what is right and what is true, and what is more in line with the church's teachings, even when that's really difficult, even when we have to make that choice that goes against the grain, that flies in the face of what popular opinion seems to be, even when we really have to be called on that courage to stand before the truth. The more we grow in our knowledge of God's love and understand what it means to be made in his image, the more we will strive for peace and not for discord. The more we will stand up for the truth of human dignity by choosing to follow the example of God who created us, God who loved us so much that he came among us. He leaped down from heaven and then he died for us on the cross. And God, who didn't want to abandon us and leave us alone, but came among us in his Holy Spirit, who was always there to guide us when we turn to him for help. God did not promise that our life would be easy, that it would be free of trouble. And all of us can share many stories of the troubles we've had and maybe many fears of the troubles we might still encounter. But God did promise that anyone who believes in him, who keeps his commandments and follows what what he has revealed to us, will have eternal life. May we seek to know the love that God has for us and share that with one another. May we seek to grow a little bit more in our understanding of the Trinity, simply acknowledging that God has revealed to himself as a relationship, revealed himself to us as a relationship of love, so that our relationships may always be founded on love. And as one family of faith, let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the mystery of the Holy Trinity, let us bring our prayers before the Lord. For the Church, drawn from all nations and languages, may our triune God guide and sustain us as we proclaim the good news of the Kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in civil power and authority, may the Holy Spirit enkindle in them hearts for servant leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those enduring trials and challenges in life, may they be uplifted by the loving presence of God and the support and compassion of the community of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here in worship of the triune God, may the communion of love he outpours preserve us in faith and increase us in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they take their place at the eternal feast in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of John and Anne Marie Fioli, for Joe Azotia, for the intentions of Ross, and for the intentions of our parishioners for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause and call to mind our own personal intentions. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All holy God, great and beyond all our imaginings. We rejoice to call ourselves your sons and daughters. Hear the prayers we offer this day. We bring them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of your name, for our church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, 
this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that, in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, your unity in substance, and your equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of the entire world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
and let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity in undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. So in union with our live stream Mass this evening, tomorrow we will have Holy Communion, once again available at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas Church between 9 and 11 in the morning and 6 to 7 in the evening. The following weekend, the 12th and 13th, uh, the bishop has asked that all churches uh, be open uh, for public masses, once again, up to 40% occupancy. Uh, so we will be publishing very soon our own schedule and the guidelines and everything for St. Thomas Aquinas uh, Church. So let us remain united in prayer, um, and hopefully everyone has a great evening this evening. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.